you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it, Lord God. We thank you for the strength and the power of your presence, Lord God, that is in this place this morning, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. God, we invite you to have your way, Lord God. Let your anointing of your presence, Lord God, your trust in, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Have your way, dear God. Lift up every bow down head, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. God bless and move, Lord God. Control? Has he 
Thank you, Lord. He is our Father. And we belong to him. <laughs> That's one of the most important things to know. If you don't know anything else, you better know that we belong to him. Oh, man, happy to see y'all this morning. Happy to see Tamika back. She's feeling good. She let us know she's feeling good today. Definitely thank God for her. Thank God for my brother Rob who held it down while she was gone. Rob held it down. So just definitely grateful. Definitely grateful. Take a morning to my wife, the most beautiful lady on the planet. My top five. My top one. <laughs> to my mother, good morning. To my mama, good morning. Good morning to my Auntie Debbie this morning. And is that my Uncle Mike in the back? Uncle Mike. Uncle Mike. Good morning. Look at Sabongale. Y'all remember Sabongale from back in the 80s? <laughs> she used to be named Stacy. Look at Sabongale. Good to see y'all this morning. Yeah, def definitely happy to see my people this morning. We're still praying for Bishop Lee Henderson Ward. Much love and respect to him, our bishop. To Sister Diane Anthony, who's not here, but y'all just don't know how much she's done behind the scenes to make this transition smooth, as smooth as it can be. So I have much love and much respect for her. Definitely praying for those who are not feeling well. Sister Beverly Hurd, who hasn't been here in, in weeks and weeks, so y'all continue to pray for her. Y'all know the state mother, Sister Diane Patricia Hall Singleton, continue to keep her in prayer. Um, Sister Sharon Lockett let's definitely pray for her for her healing as well Isaiah, little preach Isaiah Hicks I think he's a whole lot better now but we're still praying for him he's not here today and Sister Sister, Sister Regina's sister uh, Sister Jessie Bailey they call her Sister Sister uh, definitely keeping her in prayer also in the passing of their sister Sister Beverly um yeah, y'all, we just, just keeping our people in prayer. Dr. Roz, praying for you, for your healing on today. And, yeah, that's it. We're going to jump into this word today. Just making sure. Y'all also keep Marsha in prayer. Her mother is, is pretty ill, so Marsha does a lot. If Marsha missed a week here, we would know it. And when I say miss, I don't mean on the projector. I mean the duties that she really does behind the scenes. So y'all keep her in prayer for sure. All right, I failed to mention last week. Uncle Mike, you going to sit down? You got me nervous. <laughs> y'all know he can't sit still. Though. I'm just playing. That's my Uncle Mike. Uh, y'all know last week we finished Pray After This Manner. And I didn't tell y'all. That's the only thing. I failed to mention that that was the last message in this series. Oh, the Washington in the hall. Come on, Rev. Good to see you this morning. Good to see you. He said he's sitting in the hall. COVID ain't out there. He said, nah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we finished the message last week, this series, Pray After This Manner. And I just forgot to tell y'all that last week was the last message, right? And the reason I didn't do, uh, what is it? For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. If you study it, you will find that was actually added in the scriptures later. Those weren't Jesus' words, which is why you don't see Luke's in his account of the prayer, the prayer. You don't see that mentioned in there, but it was added later. You can actually find the history of that. It was a, what they called a part of a doxology um, put in there later. So that's one reason we didn't do it, even though, boy, I could have, but okay, anyway. <laughs> so this week we are starting a new Series. I like these series. Everybody knows what a series is. You watch television series. It's one, one premise, one plot, but they break it down in episodes to get, help you have a full understanding. That's pretty much what we're doing. 
And today's series reminds me of a story. Did Rob leave? He's gone already, didn't he? He had to leave today. It reminds but Alvin, I need you to stay in the room for a minute, just for a minute. Just for a minute. It reminds me of a story about 13 years ago, right? Man, I wish, I need Rob here so bad. Reminds me of a story about 13 years ago. We were in Oklahoma City. The Me Too Music crew went, the band went, actually. And we went to do a live recording for a praise team there. Set Free, was that, what was the name of the group, Alvin? Set Free. What was the name of the church? Set Free Cathedral, I think, right? So we went and did this recording. And when we got there, their stage, y'all, was longer than ours. Their stage probably went from probably the wall in the connections room, the fellowship hall, to the wall on the other side of this. The longest stage I've ever been on, right? When we got there that week, there was a man in the audience, and <laughs> we started rehearsing. And he said, excuse me, from the back of the church, middle of the church, excuse me. We have steps on the west side, steps on the east side to the stage. There are no steps in the middle. Do not climb up the top of the stage. Now, the stage was probably, it wasn't as high as this one, but he said, use the side steps. Thank you. Now, mind you, we're already on stage. None of us climbed up, but he interrupted us, right? And we were like, okay, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And that was the first night of rehearsal. And then came Saturday, the recording. And during sound check, the fellas know I, um, I could be a jerk in sound check. Because in sound check, especially when another sound company is there, the sound man is the extra member of our band. He has to become your best friend, right? So we're sitting there, and everybody has to be in place. If he's checking the keys, nobody else should be talking. If he's checking the bass, nobody, Rob shouldn't be hitting his snare. And Alvin was not in place, of course. Just like, is he here now? Yeah, he's in here. He was not in place. And the sound man is in the back, kind of where Alvin is, and he's on the mic, and he's ready to check the bass. So over the mic, he has to say, bass man, Mr. Bass man, I'm waiting on you. So Alvin comes running because he's out there talking, and he does not take the east nor the west stairs. And he jumps on stage, right? And when he jumps on stage, his toe catches the front part of the stage, right? I'm going somewhere with this. His toe catches the front part of the stage, and yeah, yeah. I mean, it was catastrophe. And he came up on the side where all of the keyboards were. So when you hit the stage, what happened? What you do, Alvin? You start what? <laughs> He started shouting. Oh, he shouted all right. <laughs> he shouted all right. Tore up his, tore up his, uh, his hand, knocked the keyboards over, all of that, right? Oh, somebody's car is still running. Whoever has a black Nissan Sentra, you left your car running? Look at Brother Rico in here. He ain't doing his job today. Checking on the parking lot. Black Nissan Sentra. If you got a Nissan Sentra, just go on and check your car. It's still running. Oh, that could be the cable man. He's here checking on the internet, so we're not streaming live right now. He's in the van, okay. Oh, ah. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, Alvin trips, right? And you heard his side of the story. He said he shouted. That's not what I saw. I wish Rob was here. I really need Rob's side of the story. And this whole story reminds me basically of what we're doing today, what we're going to look at today, because we're looking at today, our title is The Great Opportunity. And The Great Opportunity, we're going to look at it from Matthew 14. And with Matthew 14, we're going to look at Mark's version, another version, his side of the story. Y'all see that Alvin's version of the story is not quite like the one that I saw, and I guarantee you, Rob has details that I left out. It was the funniest thing ever, because all the keyboards just went flying and tumbling over. Well, that's what we're going to look at today. One thing you got to know when we're looking at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, these are the four Gospels, right? The first four books of the New Testament. Um, 
the writers of these Gospels. I'm going to tell you something that's really interesting about this. There are actually only two stories that all four of them cover. Only two stories. One of them is the, crucifix, the crucifixion of Jesus. And the other story, you can start the clock too, Nate. Thank you for not starting and doing the intro. That bought me some time. Uh, and the other story is what we're going to deal with today. Try F1. What we're dealing with today. The great opportunity. Let's start reading. Matthew 14, 13 through 36. It's a lot of reading today, so I'm going to just have to stop on the reading. As soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. But the crowds heard where he was headed and followed on foot from many towns. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. That evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place. Uh, for you kids, y'all know what a remote control is, right? Seems like every time I say to kids, I just look at the mirror. And everybody got your notebooks, youth, first of all? Your notes, your notebooks, this is going to be a good one for you today. I'm telling you. A remote place, it means a place away from. You know, when we talk about remote controls for the television, remember old school, everybody knows your parents will call you to the room from a whole nother room. Come here, you know, change the channel. And we have to go to the TV and, and physically change the channel. Well, when they came out with remote controls, it was a control that was away from the television, that you can control it remotely away from the television. Just so you will know what he means or what this writer means by uh, they went to a remote place. It's a place away from other people and other things, right? So this is a remote place, the disciple says, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. I told y'all I love the word, man. I see all the funny stuff. But Jesus said, that isn't necessary. You feed them. But we have only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here, he said. Then he told the people to sit down on the grass. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up toward heaven, and blessed them. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he gave the bread to the disciples who distributed, distributed it to the people. Yeah. They all ate as much as they wanted, and afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftovers. About 5,000 men were fed that day. Look at this. In addition to all the women and children, right? We always only hear he fed the 5,000, that it was 5,000 men in addition to the women and children. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. Verse 23 after sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Y'all, this is some good stuff, I'm telling you. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land. Boy, wait till y'all see this funny stuff up in this story. For a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About 3 o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water... They were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus, <laughs> but <laughs> who laughed? Tanya. <laughs> Man, y'all don't catch the jokes, but the stuff I don't mean to be a joke, y'all be weak. That's funny. I be at home practicing some of these jokes, and y'all just be crickets up in here. <laughs> but I said, it's a ghost, and she got weak. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. And I'm playing about the jokes. I do not be practicing jokes that much. Take courage. I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Oh, this is where everybody usually shouts in church. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. Oh, I love this. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. 
Oh, and I'm telling y'all, wait till we break this open. Verse 33. Then the disciples worshiped him. You really are the son of God, they exclaimed. Now, mind you, you notice they didn't say that? You, you notice they didn't say that when he just took five loaves of bread and two fish? Did y'all catch that? After they had crossed the lake, they landed at, landed at we'll go with Genesaret. We'll just go with that. When the people recognized Jesus, the news of his arrival spread quickly throughout the whole area, and soon people were bringing all their sick to be healed. Last verse. They begged him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe, and all who touched him were healed. Oh, man. This is a good story. And y'all should know by now, we not going to talk about nothing that y'all think we're going to talk about from this story. That's one of the reasons I love it. I love what's here that most people miss. My brother Mark always talks about the 25 easy scriptures, the 25 easy stories that everybody preaches, right? They just kind of run with it. This is one of the stories, but we rarely get blessed with the opportunity to really dive in and see what's really happening here. Did I tell y'all that the name of this series for the next few weeks is Floating? Floating. I didn't tell y'all that, did I? But y'all can read. Y'all see it. Floating. Point one already. We already there. Scooter. Good to see you, man. Point one. Jesus still cared for others when he himself was in need. Jesus still cared for others when he was in need. This messes me up. So Matthew 14 and 14 says, Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Let's look at Mark's version of this story. His account of this story, Mark uh, 6 and 34 says, Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat. I want you to notice the differences here. And he had compassion on them. That's the same, right? Then he says, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. He had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. This is why I love the different sides, the different angles of these stories, right? Because so much is revealed. For those of you all who are just becoming like Bible students and you're digging in, you will notice, because I, I have a friend who I, I do Bible study with every week, and their thing is, is why does the Bible repeat itself? They're talking about Matthew, Mark, Luke. And John, why does the Bible repeat itself? And then some of the stuff don't seem the exact same. You notice here, we're going to really point out today how this seems totally different than Matthew's account. But one thing I see here that really, really grabbed my attention is that Jesus said they were like sheep without a shepherd, and that's what gave him compassion. And he began to teach them many things. And Matthew said he began to heal the sick, right? That alone is something I, I would stay there <laughs> and rest there. Uh, but I don't know. Honestly, I've wrestled with this scripture this week. I've wrestled with expounding on it. It's really what I've wrestled with. Because I don't know that y'all will really understand my heart. I told my wife last night, I said, this message is the kind of message all the ministers in here can relate to this. You know the message in your knower. You know it in your heart. You know, you know this message, but it's hard to get it across, to explain what you know. This message, I know more than any message. I say that every week, but I know this message more than any message I've taught. But this one is going to take the Lord, the Holy Ghost, to help me get this across, to help you all get an understanding. I hope you all get the understanding. So point one was Jesus still cared for others when he was in need. We're going to talk about that later. Put a pin right there, all right? Remember that point, point one. We're going to put a pin right there. Point two, we're moving on alone because I got to get to point four. Point four, we're going to be here for a while. You can do it. It's point two, our second point that's coming out of this story, right? And we're going to really break this stuff open. 
Mark 6, 35 through 38 says, Late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the nearby farms and villages and buy something to eat. I had to pause. Sometimes I had to get the permission. I had to get permission from the Lord if I could talk about some stuff. I think I got permission. Go back, me, to 36. Send the crowds away. Go back to 35. Late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Let me see the next one. Verse 36. Send the crowds away so they can go to the nearby farms and villages and buy something to eat. Y'all know what's crazy about this? The disciples called him Lord. They call him rabbi, which means teacher. They follow him. They are following his path. They're following his lead. But amazes me that the people that follow him are going to tell him how to do his job. And give him instruction. <laughs> oh, shut up, Joe. Send the crowds away. You're going to tell them what to do. Y'all didn't, for, what's the word, forsook? I like forsaken all. They didn't walk away from everything to follow this man just for them to come and tell him what to do. Tell him how it should be run, how it should be ran, how to run it. Send, I figured with nobody going to say too much or nothing on that one. <laughs> I, I figured that. Let's just move on. But Jesus said, you feed them. That's what he said. Not feed them. See, that's how I read it. Y'all might read it. But Jesus said, you feed them. No, I hear him. No, you feed them. You going to tell me what to do? You, you feed them. With what? Now they got questions. They asked. We'd have to work for months to earn enough money to buy food for all these people. You know what's funny? It seems like when we're talking to God, when God tells us to do something, the first thing we do, but after we try to tell them how we want it done, after that, we always bring up our deficit, our lack. You notice that's what they did here after they tried to tell them what to do. Then they said, well, what are we going to do with it? How are we going to feed them? Like with what? Reminds me of Moses. Remember Moses at the burning bush? Jesus, uh, God is telling him, go tell Pharaoh, dot, 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 all of that. And he says, what's in your hand? What do you have? Remember that? The whole thing about the staff? As a matter of fact, uh... Look at verse 38. How much bread do you have, Jesus asked them. Go and find out. That's basically what's in your hand. What do you have possession of? What do you have access to? And they came back and reported, we have five loaves of bread and two fish. Now, John's version of this story tells where they found the five loaves of bread and the two fish. Remember, it was a young boy. They done went and confiscated his food. That's what they did. That's what we do, boy. They went and took his food. But here it is. They're going to tell this man what to do. Lord, as a matter of fact. They're going to tell him what to do. And then you see they don't have what they need. At least they don't think. But I love that Jesus showed them and what he showed them. Just like what God showed Moses, right? I'm still moving on because we're going to come back to these points. I just want to put pins here, but y'all still remember point one. Point three, I have the power, and I want to use you to show it. I, this is the Lord speaking. I have the power, and I want to use you to show it. Mark 6, 39 through 44, then Jesus told the disciples to have the, have the people sit down in groups on the grass. Verse 40 says, so they sat down in groups of 50 or 100. Y'all know this is a nod to the 23rd Psalms. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. Remember that? He restored my soul. Here it is. He has them lie down. Uh, lie down. He has them sit down. 
What is he having them sit down for? What is he about to do? He's exactly, he's about to feed them. That's what happens in Psalms 23. When you have sheep walking in the pasture in the green, remember I showed y'all a few weeks ago what the green pastures in Jerusalem actually looked like? It wasn't this lush green grass. This story here is a total uh, reflection of that. You'll see that here. It's a total reflection. Uh, here it is. Uh, he is showing that he is the daily bread. The whole setting of this story happens in a town named uh, Beth. Everybody says it different. Some people say Bethsaida, Bethsaida, Bethsaida. Everybody says it's totally different. But y'all know what I'm saying. And it means house of fishing. This is the place. Somebody said bread. Who's that, Joe? Don't take your min you get one point off your minister's license today. I'm gonna do one scratch. <laughs> the house of fishing, which is the home of Peter. This is his hometown. Peter, James, and John. Remember, Peter was a fisherman. This is the house of fishing. Bethsaida, Bethsaida, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, here it is. Uh, it's a city east of the Jordan in a desert place that is uncultivated ground used for grazing. What the sheep do when they eat from the grass and all of that stuff. Uh, it's a place that was used to allow sheep to eat. And coincidentally, of course, Jesus decides to feed the people that he referred to as, remember, whose version? Mark's version says he had compassion because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, verse 41, looked up toward heaven and blessed them. He blessed the fish and the bread, right? Blessed in this scripture comes from the Greek word. The Greek word, remember we're saying Greek because this is the book of Mark. Um, and it's written in the Greek. Blessed in this scripture comes from the Greek word eulogizen, the same word we get the word eulogy from. So here it is. Jesus is having a funeral. I mean, preaching a funeral. I don't know how you want to say it. Preaching over this bread and this fish. He blessed it. You know how we say bless your food? How the parents say, don't start eating until you bless your food. You know, and then we give thanks for it. That's what he did. He, and he, you see the scripture says he looked up towards heaven. This is again a nod to the manna from heaven when he fed the children of Israel. The bread came from heaven. Jesus looks up to show where the blessings are really coming from. That's what this really represents. Stick with me. We're going somewhere. Then breaking the loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people. He also divided the fish for everyone to share. They all ate, listen to this, as much as they wanted. Remember uh, the manna from heaven? Remember they would go out and gather the manna every day? No matter how much they gathered, it was just enough for the day. No matter how little they gathered, it was just enough for that day. That's what happened here. This is a whole nod, a whole reflection, a whole parallelically to the, to the manna story with the children of Israel. They all ate as much as they wanted. And afterward, verse 43, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftover bread and fish. And a total of 5,000 men and their families were fed. 12 baskets of, what did it say? Uh, and afterward, the disciples picked up 12 baskets of leftover bread, right? That's a nod to something else. Boy, I would love to stay there. Talk about symbolism and, 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 and prophecy and how the 12 represented, yes, the 12 disciples and the, the 12 that he sent out with the bread, with the life-changing message, right? That's what it was a nod to. And then the fish and all of this. I would love to talk about it. Then talk about the 12 tribes of Israel. And remember John saw the revelation of 144,000 and all of that. And a lot of the, who is it? The uh, I won't name their names. But they say only 144,000 are going to make it into heaven. And they missed the symbolism there. It's really like the disciples times. The children of Israel, 12 times 12 is what? Right. So it's a number that really can't be named for real. It's just symbolic. It's just a little note to give y'all something to study during the week. Uh, so, of course, we know this or not. Here we go. Point four. We finally here. This is where I've been trying to get to. I've been rushing through all that just to get to point four. This is what this story is all about. And this right here changed my life for real. For real. 
the importance of let's, let's, L-E-T apostrophe S, the importance of let us, us. This is so key. This is so, this will change. Young folk, please listen. Please listen. I would say young, I would say anybody, especially up until your mid-50s, please. I consider y'all young folk today. Oh, that leaves you out. <laughs> is that what you're saying? <laughs> she said, no, no. See, the th and the reason I say that, didn't think about this. People like Evangelist Wilhelmina Allen, remember what we talked about in Let's Talk Scripture, we talked about the 70 palm trees. Evangelist Wilhelmina Allen is a great example of a palm tree in, in the body of Christ. She is rooted. She is grounded. That scripture talks about, uh, uh, well, there's a reference scripture that talks about the wind and the waves that would cause you to be battered and, and cause you to, to, to shake and tumble over at any wind of doctrine, right? You know what I'm saying? It's talking about the opposite of sound doctrine. That's how I see Evangelist Wilhelmina Allen. That's why she's not included in this number. That's why I said somewhere up and around, it's kind of the, it's the people who have, and point four, uh, the importance of let us. Thank you, Lord. I listen. I promise I do. Matthew 14 and 13. Let's go back. We're going back to point one. As soon as Jesus heard the news, this is, this is how the story opens. This is what we read when we got here, right? But what we did was we really dug in. Man, it's good to see all the Antoinette's boys here today. All of them. Good to see y'all. You know, they had the weather for a while and haven't seen them in a while. I'm glad to see y'all. Matthew 14 and 13. As soon, listen to this. This changes the story, y'all. Listen, please listen. Felicia, please listen. I'm just playing, Felicia. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Felicia be busting everybody out. I'm sorry. You wasn't asleep. But you wasn't, I promise. As soon as Jesus heard the news, that's my sister, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. At, listen to this. As soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in a boat to a remote area to be alone. Uh, show me what Mark 6 and 31 says of this story, Nee. This is the same exact story, same opening. Then Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. Doesn't this change the whole thought here? At first, it leads you to believe, based off of Matthew's account, that Jesus was all by himself. But what he said was, let's go off. Man, this is where it gets good to me. He says, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. Now, this is what Mark says. He says, he said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. Please listen. This is Mark's version of the story. That's why I love different versions of the story. Alvin's version of the story was that he shouted. My story was that he knocked over one, two, three, four keyboards, bruised his hand, tore up his shin. I mean, everything. That's the better version of this story. But you notice that we get a full story with the picture when we hear both sides of the story. And if Rob was here, Rob would give you more detail. Seeing Mark's version, see, this is why young folks say, see, the Bible contradicts itself. Was he alone or was he not alone? It's just the way, the style of writing that Matthew had, the way he focused. That's what you have to learn about the difference between Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They all focus on different things. What they see and what they write about, it's the same story. It's just that their focus is different. Mark points out that Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves, right? Oh, man, this is good. Watch this. Watch this. Point four gives us a little more insight on the need that we were talking about in point one. Remember point one? I said Jesus cared for others even in his need. In his, boy, I got a lot of time. I can slow down. I feel like I'm rushing today. Let me take my time. Jesus' disciples, you have to know at this point, still not quite aware of who he was at this point. We've already read. Remember, we got down to the bottom 
where he said, oh, he must be the son of God. Well, this here is before that. This is before that. It's the same story, but it's before that. They don't know yet. And this really changed my life for real. Jesus, there are two things I see here that was Jesus, a, a part of Jesus' need. Two things I want to talk about. One of his needs was he needed to get away. He needed to slip away. Why did he need to slip away? Because if we read everything before this, in the same, in Mark and in Matthew, we see that prior to this, you got King Herod, right? Herod, however you want to say it, black folk, we say Herod. King Herod uh, had a wife, Herodias, had a daughter named Herodias as well. And Herodias does this dance for the king, the king of Galilee, the ruler of Galilee. Does this dance. He's so pleased with this dance because she's breaking it down, right? He's so pleased. He said, I'll, you name it, I'll give you anything you want. Name it, I'll give it to you. She doesn't know what to ask for. So she goes to her mother and says, what should I ask for? Mother says, go ask him for the head of John the Baptist. Go cut, I want him to cut John's head off and bring it to us on a tray, on a platter. Y'all heard the saying, uh, they delivered his head on the platter. That's where that saying comes from. And the reason they were so mad, at this point, John the Baptist is sitting in prison. He's already in prison. That's not enough for this lady. She wants him dead because John the Baptist was preaching and preaching and was telling Herod and Herodias that God didn't want them. It was, they were, their marriage was against the law of God, basically. It was a sin for them two to be married. Herodias was uh, King Herod's brother's wife. So you have to know the background here. So what's going on is... Prior to this, Herod is saying, hold on now. What's up with this Jesus guy we're hearing about? He's performing all of these miracles. He's healing the sick. He's doing this crazy stuff. He's acting like John the Baptist. Didn't I kill John the Baptist? This is what he says. Didn't I cut his head off? This is John the Baptist brought back. John the Baptist has come back to life is what he says. So because of this, only Matthew's version tells this story. That John's disciples, when he's killed, they go get his body, right? They recover his body and they bring it back to bury him. Then they go and tell Jesus what happened. And they tell him what Herod is saying. So that's why when we look at Matthew 14, see if you see Matthew 14, 13, Nee, I want you to see this. This is going to make this make sense. Look at this. That's why it says opening. As soon as Jesus heard the news. He left in a boat to a remote area to be alone for two reasons I see here. Two reasons I see. He had to slip away. Why? To save his own life. We have seen it time and time and time again in Scripture where the Pharisees would come charging in or the Roman guards and the Scripture would say Jesus would slip away. He would slip away. He would avoid capture. He would avoid them killing him. Brought me to a thought this week. How many people of y'all... How many people in here do you all know that usually says a statement something like this? Uh, I ain't scared because if it's my time to die, it's just my time to die. Well, how many of y'all say that? Let me just ask that. <laughs> if it's my time to go, it's my time to go. And so then what we do is we'll put ourselves in some situations, some positions, thinking that because our date is not here yet, then nothing can happen to us. Jesus changes my whole perception on that statement. Because Jesus knew it was not his time. But he didn't stick around either for the potential of being killed. He didn't I want to die before his time. I think we got man mixed up. I think we got some stuff turned around. I think we got some stuff turned around there. I know, I know one. He watching too right now. Can't tell you he's, well, yeah. The second part, this is, this is right here. The second part of this, this is where I want y'all to really wake up. Listen. So, the se I remember I told you I'm only going to talk about two needs of his. His first need was to get away to avoid capture and death, right? He had to get away. The second part of his need was, what was Jesus' mother's name? Mary. Mary had a relative according to Scripture. The Greek word, we say cousin because the English word says cousin. 
but the Greek word doesn't really imply that they were cousins, even though they could have been. It just says they were relatives. She had a relative named Elizabeth. Elizabeth was pregnant when Mary went to go see her. It kind of looks like Mary may have been there for the delivery of her child. I think Mary stayed there six months, four months, three months. I forget exactly. Up until the delivery of the child. And you know what her child's name was? John. John the Baptist. So, Jesus slipping away the way I see it probably has something to do with his own loved one, his own kinfolk, his own cousin. You know how we grieve and we go into isolation? We don't want to be bothered with anybody. I believe part of that is that, and I say that based off of some other areas of scripture to support that. But when he goes, this is what I love. He says, let's go. He says, let's go to a remote place. This has really helped me, y'all. I'm telling you, and I think it's going to help y'all too. He said, let's go. In our grief, we, all of us in here grieving these last few months, we, Mother Celine, our pastor, but a lot of us have cut ourselves off from everybody else. And we cannot get the type of healing that we need cutting ourselves off. But I love here, we see two needs of Jesus. Well, we're talking about two needs of Jesus. And one of them is the mourning, the possible mourning of his cousin, of one that he had a relationship with, with, the one that helped pave the way for him, right? But they go off, Jesus goes off and slips away in a boat, mind you, with the other disciples. Got to catch this. I'm getting there. Slips away with the disciples, right? And with this, with this right here, boy, they went in a boat. They went in a boat or a ship, which is part of the word fellowship. Our church's name is Bible Fellowship Church. A ship, you know what a ship is. You know what a boat is. Fellows, you know what fellows are. They're men, right? They're us, people. Fellowship. We are fellows. We used to hear our pastor say it. We're all fellows in one ship, right? Following the word, the Bible. That's why our work, that's why our church's name is Bible Fellowship. We're all fellows in the same ship, going in the same direction, navigating the same waters, following the word of God, right? Keep that in mind. Matthew 14, 22 through 36. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples, here we go right here. Now this is where it gets good. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. By himself. Now, the one thing I like here is, yes, he went off. It's the whole let us, the us thing. He went off with them. While there, he goes by himself to pray. But what I love here is when he's showing us something. When we isolate ourselves, isolate ourselves to spend time with God. Most of us don't do that. Most of us isolate ourselves to, yeah, just isolate ourselves to spend time with God. He went up into the hills when he finally broke away. The other thing I like here, though, Jesus knew he was going to break away and spend some time to himself, but he didn't do it so far connected from his disciples. He took them with him. Now, yes, we see he says, go on across, cross back. But the fact that when he goes to spend time by himself with the father or by himself, he's with the father, right? Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were, this is funny to me. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. You know what makes that so funny to me? Remember I told y'all I see the humor in scripture? We're talking about Jesus. The book of John says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And same was this and that, and then he became flesh and dwelt amongst us, and it talks about how Jesus was uh, the flesh of God, the incarnate word of God, which means, and it also says in John that there was nothing that was made that wasn't made by him. We're talking about God in the flesh. 
Did you realize earlier we read that he said he insisted on the disciples to go ahead of him only for a storm to come? So y'all know he set them up, right? That's what I'm saying. He set them up. Like, "Uh uh-huh, go. No, uh uh-uh, I know what you're saying. Just go on, go over. I'll I'll catch up to y'all later. This is the great opportunity, boy, that Jesus shows us. Ooh, let me show you this. Let me show you this. Where did we stop? About three o'clock in the morning, about three o'clock. Y'all do know the number three represents harmony. It represents wholeness. It represents completeness. This is the time of the morning where Jesus decides to bring this humongous spiritual principle into being, to complete it here on earth, to bring it into harmony, to bring it into harmony with his disciples, right? To, to unify this principle with them. Jesus came toward them walking on the water. Verse 26, when the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. Ah, oh, Tanya. <laughs> Y'all know this reminds you of, this is a nod again to the children of Israel. Remember Moses, those who don't know, just for the Bible students. Remember Moses came down from the mountain, spending time with God. He came down, everything was white, and he was glowing. Y'all see this is the same thing happening, right? And remember, they were afraid and also, all all of that also. So he says, but Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I love this right here. I am here. Go back, Nee. They missed that one. I am here. For those people who are just starting to get into the Bible, this is the name, the title associated to the Father in heaven. I am. When he spoke to Moses at the burning bush, first of all, Moses had a whole conversation. That's super funny to me. He's going to a bush and then say, oh, by the way, who am I supposed to tell him sent me after you didn't had this conversation? He says, I am that I am. This is what's happening. Do y'all see this is a, a paralleloquy of Moses and the children of Israel? Verse 28. Let's keep going. Then, ah. Uh, I sit down for this one. My seat right there. Let me sit down so I can read. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Now, you know what we do? This is the part I've heard preachers and churches go crazy and start shouting because this is the kind of faith we're supposed to have, right? But do we actually realize Peter just put himself in the number with Satan, with the people who crucified Christ. See, we think this is a good thing that happened. Peter doubted Christ. He said, now, if it's really you, remember at the crucifixion, they said, well, if it's you, call the angels down. Remember, Satan said the same thing. Throw yourself, if it have you who you say, you're, throw yourself from the cliff. Throw yourself over the mountain because won't the angels come get you? This story ain't as glorious as we thought it was. Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking. This is how good this is. I forgot we videotaping and streaming. I love the word. Verse 29. Yet, I want you to see something first. Go back. Then Peter called to him. Y'all do realize he was in the boat with other disciples. The other disciples didn't call out. Only Peter. Keep that in mind. Let's go. 29. Yes, come. Yeah. See, again, some of y'all read it. Yes, come. I read it. <laughs> uh-huh. Come on. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, come on. Jesus said, so Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. See, we see that much and we want to shout. That's the part we want to shout on, but let's keep reading. Let us keep reading. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. See the waves and the the wind and the waves? Remember I was talking about Evangelist Wilhelmina earlier? Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. Listen to this. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? 
take that in for a minute. Joe got it. See, we've been taught that he got scared from the wind and the wave. Remember earlier, he had already asked the question, if it be you. That's why Jesus responded, why did you doubt me? So here it is. Peter lets him come out. I mean, Jesus lets him come out onto the water. He lets him come out. He says, yeah, come on out. Come on, come on out here. And what happens? Just like Jesus sent the disciples knowing a storm was coming, kind of set them up. This is the other part of the setup. Uh-huh. Come on out here. And what happens? Peter starts to sink. What's the song? I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Oh, then the master. <laughs> now, that ain't what's next? I need Sister Sharon Lockett. Auntie Debbie. Sinking to rise no more. Then the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the what? He did what? And now safe am I, right? So safe am I. And then it goes on to say what? Uh huh. <laughs> Sing, Rev. Love <laughs> lifted me. Come on, Rev. There it is. Sound like he's supposed to say, Merry Christmas from the Temptations. <laughs> Jesus lifted Peter from the sinking sea, right? But look at this, y'all. Ah, aha. Aha. Man, I love this. Here it is. Jesus immediately reaches out and grabs him, right? First of all, you got to see that the scripture said that Jesus is walking on the water. I'm, I'm ready, uh, Lathan, I'm done. Jesus is walking on the water. They see him. He's on top of the water. They see him coming. They get scared, right? They're in the boat. In order to really get the for real ah uh, about this, you have to know what boat symbolize in the Bible and especially this story. The boat is a structure. It's a ship. It's something put together to keep the leaks and all of that stuff out from the water. It allows you to float on top of the water, right? The ship, the boat usually symbolizes the body of Christ, the church got to know that to get this. It usually symbolizes the body of Christ, the church. You notice all of the disciples were in the boat and then only one of them wanted to get outside of this structure, outside of this organized. Yeah. Uh-huh. Only one of them wanted to get out. And the Lord was like, mm-hmm, come on. Get out just to show you a valuable lesson that I can walk on water. That's what I do. But what I gave you all was structure to be able to float on the water. I didn't make y'all to walk on water. I gave you structure. There's a lot of people I know that says they don't believe in organized religion. The same organized religion that God gave Moses to give to the children of Israel. For what? Our safety. That's what it's for. That's what the great opportunity is about. It's about this opportunity that Jesus took to show us that the laws and his rules, this structure of quote unquote religion is for our good. Thank you, Lord, that y'all understood. It took me all that time. I didn't know if I was going to be able to explain it. It's for us. But one of us said, I want to do what you do. I, I'm going to leave the structure. I'm going to That's the whole, the importance of us. He left the us to go do me, to go do I. To try to navigate on, so water, when we talk about water and fish, right? I am doing good on my time. Water and fish. 
when we see water and fish in scripture, it actually represents two different worlds. That's what's going on. The world where the fish live, which mankind, we can't breathe in. So the fish and the water really represent the world, right? Jesus, the Lord is showing us how to navigate on top of this water. Remember, uh, be, uh, you, you can be in the world but not of it. It's really a nod and a reference to that. We can be on top of it, but don't stick your head underneath and try to breathe. That life will swallow you up. It will suffocate you and kill you. So Peter decides he wants to try to walk on top and start sinking. And Jesus has to reach down. Thank God for his grace. But the other thing I saw in this story is how Jesus will set it up for you to fail. Just so he can, remember I said earlier, point three, I think it was. Uh, he has the power and he wants to use us to show it. He pulls Peter up. This is the part I love. Go to the next scripture. When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. What I love is Jesus takes Peter and puts him back in the boat. Takes him back to safety. And where he was, the wind stopped. What wind? What does this wind represent? We talked about it earlier. Ephesians, this is the only scripture that's outside of this story. If, just so you all can get a clear picture. Ephesians 4, we always talk about, and he gave to some apostles. That, you know, that's what we used to read when the guest speaker gets up. And he gave to some pastors, some teachers, some prophets, some evangelists, for the perfecting of the way. This is at the end of that. As soon as we, where we stop quoting, this is where it picks up. And it says, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine by human cunning by craftiness and deceitful schemes he gave us the boat for our safety that's what this floating series is about staying in the boat staying in the structure that is meant to protect us that allows us to walk on the water or to float on the water rather but we're not designed to walk on the water. That's what he does. There are some things that he said we would do like him. That's not one. You notice he didn't pick Peter up and say, try it again. He did. He didn't say, one more time. boy. One more time. No, he picked him up and put him in the boat. Put him in the boat. Man, I told y'all this changed my life. The us, right? The us. We just got through dealing with pray after this manner. The Lord's, the model prayer is filled with this concept. Our Father who art in heaven, not my Father. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil I missed one it's supposed to be nine of them y'all go back and read you'll find a ninth one I missed one I only counted eight but it's nine in there that whole prayer, which we know we've learned the last month or so, is more than our Father who art in heaven. It's an action. It's a way of life. It's following the path of God. And in walking this path, we walk and we navigate the boat. We navigate through life. We navigate with the us factor, with the us mentality. Man, I really... I don't say, thus saith the Lord often, but I felt strong that somebody in here thinks I'm talking about somebody in particular about this message. And I did not, for you person who had that thought, this message had nothing to do with them. Absolutely not at all. This message has to do with us. 
us, not, not him. Us. So my prayer today, I'm praying, dear God, my heavenly, our heavenly father. I'm praying for those of us who have stepped out the boat. For those of us who have stepped out and thought we could do this without the structure that God put in place for us. Yes, there's some error. Yes, mankind has messed some stuff up. In the, yes, mankind has brought some stuff to this boat <laughs> that shouldn't be there. But we saw Jesus go to the temple and cast that stuff out. He didn't destroy the temple. Remember that? He went and flipped the tables over and cast out the money changers and the thieves. But he didn't destroy the temple. And that's what we do. I say all the time, how many of, it seems like the church is the only place where, so for instance, how many of you have gone to the grocery store, bought a loaf of bread, only to get home and see that it has mold in it? Nobody has ever done that before? Yeah, I have. Let me ask you this. Did you stop going to grocery stores? What you did was you picked through it. Next, it made you go back to the grocery store. I guarantee you, if you've ever eaten a piece of molded bread, it now wakes you to every single time. One thing my wife can't think she wants to throw something at me every time I drink cereal because when I open the top, I smell it first. And she's like, uh, I bought milk. I didn't want boogers in my milk because I had a bad experience where I drank spoiled milk. Notice I said every time I eat cereal, I didn't throw milk away. I still drink and eat cereal. Right? I still eat cereal and drink milk with the cereal. How many bankers have y'all seen go to jail for money laundering? Fraud. I bet your money's still in the bank. But when it comes to the church, we want to throw away the entire structure. That's what we want to do. We want to get rid of the whole organization. We want to get rid of the entire structure. Remember we talked about in Let's Talk Scripture when Abraham, I'm sorry, when Jacob rather, when, when Jacob and his family came to Egypt because of the famine and stuff was going on? Re re remember all of that? Well, remember when uh, that, that he was the father of Joseph and then remember that now it's time for Moses and Moses goes back to get the children of Israel from Egypt and the Scripture says that Moses made sure he went and got the bones of Joseph. The bones. Bones is the structure of our body. That's what holds us together. God intentionally put bones inside this flesh. Otherwise, we'll fall apart. We'll be wobbly. And people really want to throw away the ship. Don't throw away the ship. Just get rid of the molded bread. Pour out the spoiled milk. I also pray today for those of us who have bought, and that's why I say up into that 50-ish area, those of us who, who had a lot of questions growing up, talking to me, had a lot of questions growing up. See, I always get calls during the week. Why was you talking about me? And people be serious too. You said this about me. No, I promise you I didn't. All this stuff is about me. Everything I'm talking about. And her, she said to me. So here it is. I'm growing up and I'm studying. I'm studying. I'm studying. The truth is, y'all, I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm almost, almost ashamed to admit. When I started my journey of deep, 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 deep study about 18 years ago, I was studying with one purpose to disprove everything I learned. I thought it was, I was like, this ain't real. No, no I don't believe this stuff. That's why I started studying. And be, I, didn't even, I can't even tell you when and where it happened, where the transformation took place in my mind, where my mind was renewed, where I was born again in this situation. But that's why I started studying. I started to buy into that whole, because I started hearing the voices in the, of the world on the internet, organized religion, because that's what we hear people say. Oh no, I'm, this is the saying right here. Uh, I'm, 
I don't go to church, but I'm spiritual. I'm spiritual, but I don't go to church. But God gave us this structure for us. So my prayer today is that us that are like that, wake up and see the purpose of God. And learn how to divide what man messed up. Learn how to turn away and walk away from the corruption of man. You ever heard the saying, throw the, uh, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater? That comes from a time where they didn't have indoor plumbing. That's where this statement comes from. So they had bath day. Oh, I would have loved living back then. You only got to take a bath one day a week? woo You know how much time you waste in a day taking a bath? No. So they had bath day. And can you imagine me, Joy, growing up, me, Joy, my mama, and my daddy having to, t- well, for real, we, I can remember times we actually did do that. Let me use another example. Can you imagine me, D, Lauren, Joa, Landon, Lathan, Jayla, on one day a week sharing the same water? So what happens is the youngest would usually last to be put in the water. And you got to remember the babes vomit. They use it on themselves. All of this. So they'll put the baby in last so that when all of the stuff washes off of them into the water, now they can dump the water. So what they're saying is separate the baby from the corruption. Separate the baby from the boo-boo. Separate the baby from the pee-pee. Separate the baby from the vomit in the water. Throw the water out, but make sure you take the baby out when you dump the water. That's what we have failed to do in today's church. We have failed to separate the baby from the bath water. We throw the baby on out. But we don't do it in banks, for our banks, and we don't do it at the grocery store. So that's my prayer for today, for us. If anybody in here feels like this is you, if you feel like this is you, if you feel like you have stepped outside and you have tried to do this thing by yourself, Peter. Tried to do it without him. Tried to step out of his rules, out of his laws. See, natural law that he was breaking, trying to walk on the water. If that's you, you know what? Just stand. We're not coming down, but just stand. If that's you. If that's you, that has if you rec- I'm trying to see how to word this if you recognize that what you did was wrong you trying to do it by yourself you stepping outside of the structure of this that which is the church that which is his law that which is his rules that which is to keep us safe if that's you you can stand on your feet as well If you feel like you have gone so far away from him in doing this that you just need to rededicate and recommit your life to him, even if you've never been saved, saved, saved from his wrath, his anger from when we step away from him, when we do things opposite of him, when we disobey him. If that's you, you too can stand to your feet. And for those who are slightly ashamed that would have been me growing up past the sun but not stand up for that <laughs> if that's you my prayers for you today for boldness to have the courage to tell the devil let the devil know that he doesn't have you that you're not his child questions. We got Minister Jan, Sister Shar over here. They're going to take you to the other side. We won't do it and open in front of everybody.
one. I can't make it. From the disciples away from Lord, the us need, he tried it need your head. it's funny he tried it by himself by only to realize he needed the savior Lord, we need oh yeah need your help Just put your hands together for the Lord. the Gateway Area Bible Fellowship Church where we find needs and meet them. My name is Shar and I'm so excited that all of you could join us for our worship experience. We at Bible Fellowship, we want to support you through every season of your life. That's one of the reasons why we have small groups. We now have a new small group for widows and widowers. Please stop by the front desk and sign up after service or you can contact Minister Andre Pettiford for more information. Are you looking for us on the World Wide Web? Our church website has changed from gatewayareabfac.com to gabfac.com. Visit our site to stay up to date on all of our announcements and to watch current and past services. Life isn't always easy, and sometimes you just need a fresh word from the Lord. You don't want to miss Hot Bread Wednesdays every Wednesday at noon via the Band app. Our ministers are serving up a Bible-based inspirational word that will help you power through the rest of your week. Attention, at the end of service today, you will be directed around for offering and escorted outside. Please follow directions given by our hospitality crew. COVID numbers are back up and we need everyone's help and support to keep us safe. Thank you. It's not safe to drink from our water fountains right now. So we have free bottled water at the front desk just for you. Please remember to throw your bottle away when you're finished. Are you new to our band app? Or maybe you've been using it for a while. Please be sure to add your photograph and your full name to your band profile. It helps us identify everyone and it's a nice way to get acquainted. Thank you. And we look forward to seeing your smile. 
Come worship with us. Be sure to reserve your seats for service on Mondays at 5.30 p.m. on the band app. And if you know someone outside of our band group, tell them to visit our Facebook page to reserve the number of seats that they need, or you could do it for them. See you on Sunday morning. Coffee is nice. But if you're looking for the perfect way to jumpstart your day, join us at 5 a.m. seven days a week on the prayer line. We also pray at 6 p.m. on Wednesday nights. Let's study God's word together. Join us for virtual Bible study at 6 p.m. on Tuesday nights. It's easy and convenient. All you have to do is dial the prayer line number. Are you new to our band group or do you just want more control of your notifications? Good news. We have a solution for you. Go to your settings, then click my settings and under push notifications, select comments and then choose comments on my post only. So you will not receive notifications all day from other members responding. Thank you. And we look forward to communicating with you. Mondays are fun days at Bible Fellowship. Join us for youth Bible study via Zoom on Monday nights. Youth ages 9 through 12 log on from 6 to 6.30 to hear God's word. Teens, join us from 6.30 to 7. Let's do this. You want to be able to give anywhere, anytime? If you just download the Giveify app, right to your phone. You can pay your tithes, your offering. You can give a donation. Just download the Giveify app, put in the church's name, and it's that easy. Anywhere, anytime, you can be a blessing to the church. your opportunity yes. your opportunity to give your opportunity to be a part so let us give yes. giving from the heart giving out of need and giving to a need so I don't know uh, okay so today we know that March is not here and we know that our mortgage and our insurance, all these things, like we pay at our own homes, are due. So what I want to say is, let's keep giving. Yes. So at this time, I want everyone to stand, and Zelda and Peggy will lead us around, and then we will be dismissed. May it snow dear. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God imposes. The love of God imposes. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. And wherever I am, God is. And all is well. I got it right. Get ready. Get ready for your blessing.